Hey there, thanks for tuning in. I'm Torgo of Torgo Entertainment. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Welcome back to a gig log. We're still in prime wedding season. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Looking at. We just finished the wedding at the American Legion in Camp Valley yesterday, and today, Sunday, we have yet another wedding. Going back to back on weddings, which honestly, I'm not a huge fan of doing. I actually had this Sunday one booked for quite some time, and the Saturday one, as I had mentioned, we snuck that in a couple weeks ago. But this time around, we have an EDM-themed wedding. I know a lot of DJs out there are thinking this is the dream gig. This is what you've always hoped for, because a lot of DJs, especially online, practice in their bedrooms and they really focus on EDM, trap, techno, trance, progressive house, all that good stuff, which is fine, but I'm not very well versed in that, so this ended up being quite a struggle. Fortunately, the couple was extremely helpful. They gave me a lot of music. They gave me like 300 plus songs to listen to in terms of what they wanted to hear. And I know that there's gonna be a lot of quick mixing, so that sounds like a lot, but we may in fact blow through a lot of it. I worry about the size of the playlist at the end of this video. Becky and Mark are really cool. They both are local to the area. They actually booked me at the mall show. They were very impressed with the setup. They were very impressed with the fact that I was actually playing dance music at the time, that I was personable, that I was close to their age, and so they decided to go with me on that one. I'm bringing one new piece of equipment for this wedding, and that is a Chromebook. And I'm bringing the Chromebook because this is where our music will come from at the ceremony. I got the Chromebook because all we need to do is play some music. I know ideally that you should have these connected to the internet, but what I need to use this for, we do not. I just have all the ceremony music on this flash drive. We plug it into the USB slot, and we have... That was my truss. I have all the music on the USB slot, and we just plug it in. We use the headphone jack into the RCA connector on my ceremony mixer, and we are good to go. It couldn't be simpler. We have the wedding at Bellhurst Castle. I haven't done a wedding there in about five years, and it always seems to go all right. It's one of those places where they churn out a whole slew of weddings, one by one. So the ceremony has to be taken down particularly quickly, which is why I'm actually bringing two assistants to this wedding, which I've never done before. Phil, who helped me on gig logs four and six, and Ben, who helped me on gig log three, are both coming with me this time around. So having the extra sets of hands there will help me a lot, especially with that transition period. And in terms of setup, it's gonna be the standard one. I know I had the truss set up at the mall show. I've decided to not bring the truss because if you look at the room at Bellhurst Castle, having truss there would kind of conflict with the atmosphere that they're going for. You may also notice these giant windows and if they wanna have like a rave kind of vibe going on, I don't know if they're gonna close the curtains or what, but there is so much light seeping through, so I hope that we can try to make something happen, especially because a lot of people are expecting me to really go hard to the paint with some of this music, which I'm looking forward to. I really challenged myself taking this one on. Bellhurst Castle, I said that a couple times. Where is it? Let's go to the map. Bellhurst is located in Geneva, New York, so we have about an hour 15 drive up there. Fortunately, the weather is conducive for such a drive today. I'm bringing all the foam sticks. The reason I actually bought those in the first place was for this wedding, except they came in the pack 360, which is why you've seen me interspersing them throughout in various proms and a wedding here or there. But I hope you're ready for this one. I'm ready. I hope you like the electronic music. Let's go. So the parking is really nice here. That is the ballroom, the Meritage Ballroom, and there's the parking and there is a little walkway to connect the two. But the weather took a bit of a turn for the worse while we were setting up, so I really hope it holds up for the ceremony. 
Inside, we have the reception set up completely. I'm gonna go through everything in detail. We have the dragon frontboard facade in the Ritmo white pattern. I've been getting a lot of mileage out of this thing. I love the way it looks, especially at weddings. I wish those chairs weren't there for this shot, but that's the whole room. We are not uplighting the room. Opted against it, the couple didn't want it. Next to the power, we have my two EV ZXA1 subwoofers stacked. They're pointed toward the dance floor. It ended up being the best for acoustics. My QSC 10.2 speakers. My tops are pretty great. We have my Chauvet Wash FX lights, the ADJ power bar, just some ultimate speaker stands, not the light up ones from ADJ, but we do have the element pars underneath the speaker stands and underneath the scrim. We're gonna put some element hexes underneath this scrim on the sh on the uh, trust glow totems as well. And we have my ADJ Pocket Pros. We have the lights underneath the speaker stands plugged in, which is why they're on now. We just haven't turned on the lights underneath the glow totems just yet, just to save power behind the booth. This will look pretty familiar. We have, of course, my mixer, my baby, the Pioneer DDJ SX2. I don't care that it's outdated. I still love this thing. My Samsung laptop running Virtual DJ Pro, my trackball mouse, my flash drive, which has the ceremony music, my Samsung laptop running my DMX Go, working great, by the way. Haven't forgotten about that guide. My Audio-Technica DJ headphones, my ceremony box, which is going to go outside, my Shure 58A Beta microphone, standard mic stand. I got that from a local shop. My trash can, which everybody needs. Oh, my Home Depot anti-fatigue mat. We're going to get some use out of that. The 9HUB hex bars lighting up the facade that pretty much covers everything inside so let's take a look outside at the ceremony just give me a second to move the microphone box outside to show you and just like magic it's already out here that four foot table comes from costco we have my eight inch rcf 708a tops for the ceremony love the way the high end sounds on those just some standard ultimate speaker stands i wasn't gonna do drapery on this one i'm off to the side enough we have my box with the four tv antenna coming out and we can plug right into nature for this particular wedding which is really nice on the other end we have you know the drawers i've shown this off in the past my chromebook that i showed off a little bit earlier in the video the usb is plugged in my yamaha 10 inch mixer to run all the volumes and there's my shore ulx microphone pack for the lapel that is a ulx pack but it's a sennheiser physical microphone because it uses the limo 3 connector which is no longer produced so everything's looking good weather cleared up one more thing guys level up <laughs> Let's go.
five minutes later. Afternoon after. I know I always try to do things the morning after, but this event ended pretty late and I had a bunch of stuff I had to do today, Monday, and I have a lot to talk about for this wedding. First and foremost, I apologize that all of the footage of the dancing does not have any audio. We had a bit of a technical hiccup, so while the footage looks amazing, unfortunately it doesn't have any of the audio, but the ceremony does and that came out great. Having two assistants was a huge boon. We were able to set up and take down incredibly quickly. I think we had the entire thing taken down in an hour 15, both setups combined. One interesting issue that we had is we had a vendor table where we would eat the three of us. I had already put in that we were gonna have three people and each of us had our meal plans and the photographer would be the fourth. But the photographer came with an assistant so we had to fit five people at this little itty bitty table and I was definitely the one that ended up at the corner of the table so that was a little less than ideal. Ceremony went off without a hitch. Interestingly, the placement of the mic stand during the ceremony was not our doing. We had it off behind the tree that was right there but no they wanted it right front and center and I hope that Phil got this on camera but there were moments that Ben we tried to make it so he could you know sneak in there and grab it he just didn't have the opportunity to do that unfortunately so it just kind of had to stay there during the ceremony I expressed concern with this being a Bellhurst castle but with that room and the giant windows it was a beautiful day 
and everyone just wanted to be outside. So I'm sitting there after dinner, you know, trying to make the dance floor happen as hard as I can with the songs that the bride and groom want me to play, and there's just nobody out there. There's nobody in the room, really, so I'm playing for pretty much an empty room for a good hour and a half. The bride and groom both separately came up to me and said, no, this is what we want, you're doing a great job. And inevitably, they did come out and dance a little bit, so they were extremely happy. So don't get frustrated if the dance floor isn't packed the entire time. What's most important is that the people who hired you are happy, and I did exactly what they wanted. They had a couple interesting things at this wedding, not the least of which was that they'd had Super Smash Brothers Melee on an old school tube television set up next to the DJ stand. I don't know how my lights didn't interfere with that, but nobody picked Ice Climbers, which was my main, and that made me incredibly upset. And by incredibly upset, I mean slightly annoyed, but because this is the internet, you have to over-exaggerate everything. Nine o'clock rolls around, which is when the couple said that they were initially going to end, and I was like, hey guys, do you want to go for an extra hour or so, like you're supposed to do at the end of an event? And they were like, sure, you can go until 10. 903, 904 rolls around and the venue is like, why are you still playing? And I was like, oh, well, you know, the couple told me that they can go until 10 o'clock. They didn't ask the venue. So it doesn't matter how much they want you to be there for overtime, you have to clear it with the venue first. And I, I don't know why they didn't do it, maybe because it was a Sunday and they had a bunch of weddings going on there, but they told me to shut it right down immediately. After spending so long trying to get people out there and they finally do and then they wanted to just keep on going and then it just be like, nope, we're done. Them's the breaks though. That's how it works. Overall though, I think this went about as well as could be expected, if not a little bit better. I know EDM isn't exactly my fort, but I ended up doing the best I could and they said I absolutely nailed my transitions, nailed the song selection. I even played some stuff that they didn't give me, some stuff that I remember from back in my WHUS college radio days. I used to have a segment on the radio called the 20 Minute Mini Rave where I played techno and trance and house music for about 20 minutes every single week out of my two hour radio show. So I definitely had a little bit of an ace in the hole there. I definitely played some throwbacks from San Zion 7 and some presets in there that I was really happy to get, to, get some use out of. But but until the next event, leave a comment in the comment section below this time because we need DJ names for Phil and for Ben. Because I don't like just going by Torgo and having them be Phil and Ben. So if you have an idea for what they should be known as, please let me know. We're open to suggestions. But until the next event, I'm Torgo of Torgo Entertainment. Enjoy the playlist at the tail end of this video, and I'll see you at the next gig. Take care. Fatigue mat just like spikes on a mat. Sandpaper. It's supposed to like relax you so you'll be like, oh, I gotta go get some sleep. You can help people who are like insomniacs. Stay mental fatigue.
team met for a bit and they're like, oh, I'm so tired now. <laughs> There's a market. <laughs> Untapped market.